The answer, my friend, is going with the parameter. The perpetual newbie journal entry hashtag 2.1 This article first appeared on http colon slash slash www.undu.com Every one of us has heard the code reuse mantra. Some of us are a little slower to adopt new practices when old practices are as comfortable as an old tune. But the times, they are a changin' and it's high time to dip a toe into reuse, even if it's only to reuse a form. I recently had cause to create a modal form to do some editing of a record from a grid. It made sense to make it a modal form so that the user could see the whole of the information at one time. No problem. I reference the main forms data source dot auto edit equals false and everything worked hunkadori. The modal form consisted of some edit fields, a post button, a cancel button and three event handlers. Besides the post and cancel handlers, there was a key press handler that turned enters into tabs. I also turned off the caption bar exit button. Editing was initiated by a button in the lookout bar on the main form. The concept worked very well in auditing changes made during the editing session in a history field. So well did the modal form work that I decided to double up use of the form by using it for adding a new record in the database. All I had to do was to exercise some runtime modifications, changing the caption and tweaking a few other settings prior to opening it up as a modal form. Whereas the customer ID field was read only in the modal form, it was turned off in the ad form. At least I thought that was all there was to it. I encountered a problem because the database in question was a detailed database, linked to a master. No problem. I would simply copy the data source and table to another name, i.e. customer to see UST edit. Then I could reset the pointers to the copy's data source. The edit procedure just had to include a go to current function to harmonize the two copies and finish with a refresh on the original to make sure all of the changes were noted. The edit function was easy to modify. Begin frm customer equals tfrm customer dot create nil. With frm customer do begin fldc ust number dot read only equals true, slash slash new ensure you can't change the key field caption equals edit customer, slash slash new make the caption indicate function tblc ust ed dot go to current, frm main dot tbl customer slash slash new harmonize the shadow table with the master if not source c ust ed dot state in ds edit modes then tbl c ust ed dot edit slash slash ensure entering edit mode try show modal 
slash slash bring up the form, use it and then lose it finally free, and, and, tbl customer dot refresh, slash slash new update the viewing data with the behind the scenes changes and, things with the ad didn't work as soon as I clicked the button during execution. It produced a complaint that the data set was not in edit mode. I put in breakpoints. I switched from using a pen to insert and back again. The program kept breaking on TBLCUST edit. Append, even when I asserted immediately beforehand that the source was in edit mode immediately before. I.e. Begin FRM customer equals TFRM customer dot create nil with FRM customer do begin FLDC UST number dot read only equals false caption equals add a customer try TBLC UST ed dot append slash slash bomb Accept show message, editing problematical, and, try show modal, finally free, and, and, tbl customer dot refresh, and, if I placed and I checked for DS edit modes above the append statement and then marked with a breakpoint, the debugger would not execute, it being optimized out or changed in location by the compiler. And, the code was pointing back at the button click event of the button when you got finished answering dialog boxes. I was one confused puppy. I was headed to the internet when I finally saw what the problem was. Then record method for TBL customer included four default field settings. It was phrased in the procedure for example as TBL customer dot field by name carrier dot asterisk equals fedex this was copied verbatim to the new record field of the copied data source i looked at this for hours before noticing that tbl customer and tbl cust edit were not one and the same sheep faced grimace the problem was solved initially by simply correcting the name discrepancy. However, I have come to the conclusion that I am way too apt to make this mistake again. So, uh, the new approach is to use the calling parameter in the with style. I.e. Begin with data set do begin field by name, carrier, dot asterisk equals FedEx, field by name, GST, dot as boolean equals true, field by name, PST, dot as boolean equals true, field by name, approved dot as boolean equals false and and i've decided that i'm going to use that calling parameter more often it might require a comment or two to be totally clear on quick reading but i vow to use it to cover my butt against stupidity like i perpetrated against my deadline here today 
Hope this helps prevent a furrowed brow or two in the future. More on safe coating ideas by Gary Mugford, mugford at aztec-net.com The above article generated responses from Ramon Prick and Andy Robinson. Here is my follow-up, thanks, to Ramon Prick of the Netherlands, for amplifying the concept behind my article. It's the kind of dialogue that can often be illuminating and helpful to programmers at all but the expert level. It is true that the idea behind safe coding is to eliminate errors of omission as much as possible. Field name changing does go on more often than I would like. Ramon suggested going to some length to avoid mentioning field names by hard-coded names, preferring constants, or field-level definitions in data modules. Yet I've found the FBN references easy to locate and change with any standard grep utility. That the constant suggestion makes ease of replacement a snap is obvious. But that ease does come at a price, storage space. In an app of decent complexity, the number of field names could be sizable. And these have to be unit level global constants to have any worth and should be application wide global constants to be as much value as you desire. Data modules do have the utilization that you suggest, but add another layer to the program code. They aren't all that necessary in a properly managed SDI interface where the child forms use the calling forms data sets where appropriate. All in all, I find the incidence of changed field names, as adverse added names, occurs infrequently enough that I choose not to pay the overhead. In group programming efforts or in MDI applications, I can readily see the value in your first suggestion and would recommend its adoption. In another email, Andy Robinson from South Africa indicated that he had had problems in the past with nested use of data set parameters. His problem was with unending loops. In this kind of structure it would appear that you cannot trust certain statements. E.g. I no longer attempt this. With data set 1 do begin with data set 2 do begin. Next, and, and, and. This is a different situation than the one I posited that had a single data set parameter passed through from an automatic method like after insert. While he has not had the time to investigate the problem and pin it down, this kind of heads up now has me looking very carefully at all nested with statements. By the way, code template use allows for the most usual problem solution to the looping problem noticed by Andy. I have a with EOF template that types in, with do begin first, while not EOF do begin. Next, and, and, also, 
FBNS to expand to field by name, dot asterisk and FBNI to expand to field by name, dot as integer really work wonders in terms of accuracy and speed of code entry. Ultimately, as a one-man shop, these speed gains merit the continued use of the coding practice that wouldn't work nearly as well in your organization. Gary Mugford Idea Mechanic Inc. Bramalia on Canada